Kapow. Hi, welcome to Kapow Film Festival. This is the Kapow Film Festival, and this is the Q&A section of Kapow Film Festival. And we have here Mr. Harvey Goldman, who has his project called Strange Attractions. Welcome to Kapow, Harvey. Hey, how are you doing, Jacques? Awesome, awesome. So, Harvey, tell us about yourself. Where are you from? Well, I'll tell you about myself, and I'll tell you about my collaborator. So, Strange Attractors is, is, a, is was created by myself and a Chinese composer named Jing Wang, who's living in the States. Uh, I'm from Cal. I'm from Chicago, and I've been living for about the last thirty years in New England. And Jing is living in Providence and goes back and forth between here and China in the, in the summer times. So uh, I started teaching out here at the University of Massachusetts about 30 years ago. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, so were you always into filmmaking? How did that come about? Good question. Uh, no, I was not always into filmmaking. It, 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 I always had an interest in, you know, as a 10 year old, I made some films, but I was not, I started off my career as a visual artist. <clears throat> and uh, after numerous years and did pretty well in that area. Uh, but I got to the point where I became very interested in music and I started producing some albums, working with a colleague and uh, through the music, I realized that I was really interested in, in time-based art and that, uh, Film was an avenue. I started off in animation, and the piece in the Kapow Festival, Strange Attractors, is an animation, 3D model animation. Uh, currently, I'm working on some work that really combines uh, more traditional film with uh, animation, but uh, and it's all very experimental. Uh, so, that, how I got into it was kind of sideways. I was interested. There's a field called visual music. <clears throat> and uh, basically, it's uh, it started off the guys who uh, in the '30s who started working on the Disney Fantasia stuff, where they were just interpreting <clears throat> images. But it was uh, abs the stuff I was interested in was abstract, and there were things uh, developed like light organs, where the music would correspond to the colors <clears throat> or shapes that were projected from projectors and that field is advanced and I got very interested in it and uh, decided I wanted to work with a musician even though I, I was doing music myself I wanted to work with someone who was dedicated to doing music and uh, we take turns uh, interpreting each other's work so Jing may compose a piece and I will interpret it visually what we try to do really is uh, and this is getting more about the work itself uh, is uh, create a piece that's a little different than a, how you would create a piece of music. The music or the visuals should not stand by themselves. So we're trying to create a piece that when it's put together, all the elements, it becomes a, a unique whole. So in traditional film, you might have uh, you know, a set of visuals that are where music supports that, <clears throat> those visuals. You hire you know, some musician to come later on and, and write a score for your music. This is not that approach. The music might come first. <clears throat> and then the visuals would interpret the music. And the, and the music, I, I feel a little uncomfortable, Jing not being here actually, but she couldn't be here. Uh, but um, the visuals are not, there's no hierarchy. The music is as important or more important and vice versa at a given instant in the piece. So that, that's a little bit about the, the field of visual music as well as uh, how I got into it. Very interesting. So the premise of both, they work in tandem and it gives you this interesting message across and they both have their own rhythm and they, they both work together at the same yeah, time. Yeah, so in, imagine, you know, normally in a piece of music, you might fill up the space, but here there's spaces left open knowing that the visuals are gonna come in and weave in and out. So it, when I realized that visual art was really dealing with the same, uh, Taxonomy, when you think of line, shape, color, form, <clears throat> balance, harmony, unity, all these terms were the same in both fields. And I started to think there's really uh, so much correlation. Why not get involved in, in, in weaving them together? So yeah, exactly what you're saying. They're, they're really uh, give and take. And sometimes uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mental condition <laughs> called, uh, I'm forgetting the name of it now, where you see colors or you 
uh, some people see letters, when they hear a sound, you might see a color or what, and, and I have a little bit of that condition, uh, but usually like if, if Jing will write a piece of music, I may lay on the floor for a week, just listening to that music, conjuring up visuals that may or may not relate in some way. And she'll be writing the music knowing that I'm doing that and, and vice versa. If I'm creating a visual piece, it's a piece that I would never do to stand alone. You know, I have to leave room. And what I don't like in, in the field is a kind of a coloring book approach where you're just <clears throat> following along with the music or following mm -hmm. along the visuals. So the music gets louder, the visuals get louder. So this is trying to do something a little different, create a cohesive composition. Interesting. It it garners into the project strange attractions. I felt like it's very therapeutic in a sense. There's a bit of a calmness, uh, a bit of a, a it, it can put you in a trance by, mm -hmm. what, how do you explain that? Well, I've explained it two ways. It's, it's a real merger of Eastern and Western uh, tastes. So Jing comes from a very strong Eastern tradition of, in her music, as well as her aesthetics. So that we talk a lot about, uh, you know, Western music is full of drama. <laughs> Eastern music is very, very serene, very laid back. And, you know, think of the, even the visuals, the mountains where the, the ink, the old ink drawings where the people are very small and the, the, the land nature takes over and it's a very serene kind of meditative. It's where Buddhism comes from and, and those yeah. types of, uh, Eastern philosophy. So you, that's probably where most of those feelings coming from. Although strange attractors is a word that's used in the uh, world of, of uh, subatomic particle study. So the specific piece, that piece is actually inspired by uh, lots of research we both did in readings on quantum physics and the study of subatomic particles. So a lot of uh, the way the they use the term strange attractors because they they can't quite understand how they attract each other and why they do some of these particles. And uh, it's a fascinating thing to read about because it starts to get into understanding space and time and how, you know, it's, it's kind of a new a quantum, uh, the study of quantum mechanics really is a, lot, a new, new way of explaining reality since what Einstein did in, in the thirties. And it's, it's, uh, they don't quite agree with each other. And there's a lot of strange things that are going on that nobody knows about. And I think that's where the term comes from. But uh, I've, I have a background in a prior life to some si studying some science. I was really interested in so science and I felt comfortable with it. So I've always, I have a brother who's a you know, real heavy duty researcher in the sciences. So I've, I've created animations that explain his research and I've, I have a, a lot of respect for uh, that field. And I'd like to combine the idea of science and art as well as music and visuals. And um, that's where the, the specifics of the strange attractors comes from. Well, that brings me to my next question is, so with this piece, what what is your next step with doing this? Are you, would you like to make more series of this where it brings more messages or what would well, you like to do? We've already, good, good question again. And, and uh, thank you for asking. Uh, I've we've already started up uh, two new pieces. What we're kind of semi-commissioned to do, there's a European organization called Mejmart. They invited 30 international artists to create, each one to create a piece based on a given word. And uh, mm. the piece we're working on is called, uh, the word we were given was space to be interpreted however one chooses. So that's one thing that's in the uh, oven, so to speak, and then we're working on a series called the Jala series, and Jala means water in a Pele Hindu uh, language, oriented language, and uh, it's a series of uh, studies of the, the first. The first piece dealt with water. Uh, was called. It's going to be called Deep Air. It deals with water and air moving. It's a lot of underwater photography. <clears throat> I spent the summer swimming with a GoPro under. You know, in, in, we, we live up near the, the ocean, so. Uh, got a lot of good footage to work with and that's what I'm working on as well and uh, I'm going to do some stuff with clouds in relation to water there'll be a it's a it's going to be a sweet three parts so um, no I think strange attractors will 
um, so these new pieces will be more like I was saying, live footage with some of the techniques in the animation that qualities uh, woven in, but not the Stranger Tractors is probably the last instead of the first of a pure animation. I, I'm really getting excited about combining uh, kind of a, the imagination that you can do with animation with reality <laughs> and seeing what happens. Amazing, amazing. Well, Harvey, we have two final questions for you. So what okay. is the message that you want um, people to get from um, experiencing watching Strange Attractions? Hmm. Uh, I guess I'd like them to not come with any expectations and to come, come to it more like the way they would go to a museum or a gallery to experience a piece of art and to just sit back and let it, it, it's gonna bring back to different people, it's gonna bring different cognitions depending on your history and what you've been through in your life and uh, to just enjoy it. I really don't uh, have a, it's not a piece that has a, a message beyond what it is. It's almost like abstract art where you're going to look at an abstract painting and you, people are gonna feel different emotions in different ways. And how I feel about it is one way. And I realize that not everybody's going to feel that way. Mm, interesting. Last question would be, if you can talk to your younger self, what advice would you give? <laughs> oh, that's such a great question. I guess one of the things that was that I would, there's so many things, I don't know where to start, to be honest, it's, it's, uh, it's endless. But I, I, I felt one thing that I picked up as I got older that uh, is that you never know what's around the corner and don't put off what you can do today <clears throat> till tomorrow because tomorrow may not be there. So my advice to myself is to just, you know, if you love doing it, keep doing it while you can and enjoy it because life is short. And uh, as an older person, uh, you know, a little older than my younger self, at least, uh, I've appreciate, I've loved the life I've lived and I just, uh, you know, enjoy your life. That's what I would tell myself. <laughs> awesome, awesome. It's, it's a gift. It is a gift, you're absolutely right. Well, Harvey, what are some of the ways that people can get in touch with you to find out more about what you do and some more to experience more of your work? So harveygoldman.com I've got a full website that has a contact area as well as uh, the music that I've produced is on there as well as uh, a lot of the earlier visuals as well as some sculpture and things of that sort. So uh, it's, it's a rich w website and uh, that would be the best way. Perfect. Well, Harvey, we appreciate you and we appreciate that you have gone to the Kapow Film Festival and everyone will get to experience watching your, your work, your art. And we look forward to you attending the festival and enjoying the festival as well. Well, Jacques, thank you so much. You know, I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing with the festival. It's a great thing and it's a difficult thing to do. And, and I think, you, you know, the audience, the public really appreciates the hard work you guys put in. So thank you very much. Uh, absolutely. And likewise, we appreciate great work. So looking forward to presenting your work in the festival. Thanks, Jock. Take care. You too. Take care. Wow. <laughs>